For the first time in 2025, there will be a $2,000 cap on out-of-pocket prescription drug spending for medications covered by your Medicare Advantage or Part D plans. However, even with this cap, imagine you make your first trip to the pharmacy next year and suddenly you are still faced with a hefty bill of hundreds or possibly even thousands of dollars all at once. This is where the new Medicare Prescription Payment Plan or the M3P comes into play. This program, it could be a game changer for some of you worried about large unexpected costs at the pharmacy. What kind of changes? My name is Cameron Giardini with Giardini Medicare, and in today's video, we are going to explore how this payment plan works, who can benefit from it, and why it might or might not be the right choice for you. Real quick, like always, all we ask is that you give this video a like, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future videos, and please do not forget to share this video with anyone in your life who might also find it helpful. You guys have to see this. The Medicare Prescription Payment Plan is a new voluntary program designed to help those of you on Medicare who face high out-of-pocket costs for prescription medications. Instead of paying a large sum of money all at once when you pick up prescriptions at the pharmacy, this plan, it would allow you to spread out these costs over the year with more manageable monthly payments. Because the Medicare prescription payment plan isn't a very catchy name, you might also hear brokers refer to it by other names such as copay smoothing. That sounds weird. Since that is a term that really gets to the heart of what the M3P does. It smooths out those big upfront payments so that you can better manage your finances throughout the year. However, just know that your monthly payment amounts, they can change from one month to the next, even if you are part of this program, as we will show later in some examples. If you choose to enroll in the payment plan, when you fill your medications at the pharmacy, you will pay $0 for your covered prescriptions at the point of sale at the pharmacy. This is because your prescription drug plan insurance company will cover those initial costs for you. Then the insurance company will bill you in monthly payment installments for you to pay them back the costs that you would have had to pay upfront at the pharmacy had you not had this program in the first place. Your plan will send you a letter with information on how to pay the monthly bills when this does happen. Keep in mind that this program, it does not reduce the overall cost you will pay for prescriptions. For example, if you have $1,000 in medication costs, although this helps spread out those costs throughout the year, at the end of the day, you will still end up paying the full $1,000 for those medications. Overall, think of the program like buying a car and getting a loan, except this time the loan doesn't actually have any interest on it. And then of course, making monthly payments to pay back that loan over time. Now it's important to know that this program, it does of course apply to both standalone Part D prescription plans and Medicare Advantage plans that include prescription drug coverage. So if you are enrolled in either of those types of coverage, the M3P is available to you in 2025. But there are some important exceptions that you should be aware of. The M3P it does not cover your plan's monthly premiums, nor does it apply to Part B medications or drugs that are not covered by your prescription plan's formulary. For instance, if you are prescribed a medication like Ozempic strictly for weight loss, you won't be able to use the M3P program to spread out those costs. And while this program is designed to help with high prescription costs, it is certainly not a one-size-fits-all solution, and this payment plan might not be the right choice for everybody, which is exactly what we will explore as we continue in this video. Who exactly is eligible for the Medicare Prescription Payment Plan? Well, the good news is that it is available to all Medicare beneficiaries, again, who have prescription drug coverage through Part D or Medicare Advantage plans. But there is a bit of confusion out there and I want to clear that up straight away. A lot of people think that only those with a single medication cost of $600 or more are eligible for the M3P, which is simply not true. While those people do fall into a special group which is considered likely to benefit from this program, Everyone with Medicare prescription drug coverage is eligible regardless of your prescription cost. If you are in that likely to benefit group, 
you might get a bit more attention from your prescription drug plan, so let's talk quickly about how these eligibility notifications work. First, before the plan year begins, which means before 2025 in this case, insurance companies, they are required to look at their current Part D enrollees and identify anyone who spent $2,000 or more out of pocket on prescriptions between January and September of this year. But why this number? Well, it's the same as the new spending cap that we talked about in 2025. And the data from Medicare shows that about 82 to 89% of people that reached this amount in the previous year are likely to benefit from enrolling in the M3P the following year. If you are one of those identified as likely to benefit, your insurance company must notify you in writing. This likely to benefit notice will come either through the mail or electronically, and it will include everything you need including an M3P election request form and more information about the payment program itself. And remember, these notices, they have to be sent before December 7th, so if you know you have expensive medications, keep an eye out for it. Then, once the plan year starts in 2025, there are more ways you could be informed of this program. For example, insurance companies must notify pharmacies if a Part D enrollee has an out-of-pocket cost of $600 or more for a single prescription medication, and pharmacies must then notify you, the beneficiary, using a likely-to-benefit notice. Just keep in mind that the pharmacy is not responsible for enrolling you into this program. To do that, you will need to contact your prescription drug plan directly if you decide to go that route. During the plan year, meaning during 2025, if a plan identifies someone as likely to benefit, they must also send the likely to benefit notice to the member along with additional information and an enrollment request form. Medicare also states that Part D sponsors, they must develop strategies for ongoing outreach throughout the plan year to enrollees that they consider likely to benefit from the program. But what if you don't fall into the likely to benefit category due to high medication costs? Well, that's probably going to apply to most of you watching this video. In these cases, plan sponsors, they are expected to educate their members about the M3P using a lot of the usual documents you already receive. These can include things like the member ID card mailings, as well as other notices for enrollees. For example, the evidence of coverage, annual notice of change, and explanation of benefits documents, as well as the insurance companies putting this information on their websites. One important thing to keep in mind is if you're receiving extra help, also known as low income subsidy or LIS from the government, even if your retail medication costs are high, the amount you actually pay will likely be much lower due to those programs. This means while you are technically eligible for the M3P, you probably won't see much benefit from it. We also see other situations where enrolling in the M3P, it might not make sense. For example, perhaps your yearly drug costs are low, or you're considering enrolling in the program later in the year. Or maybe your monthly drug costs are pretty steady and you have no trouble affording them. Medicare.gov also has a pretty simple guide to determining if this plan might be right or wrong for you, and we will look at some examples in a moment to show you why people in these categories might be better off without the prescription payment plan. Now that you know who is eligible for the program, let's talk about how you can actually enroll in the Medicare prescription payment plan. To be very clear, enrollment in this plan is not automatic. It is something you will have to actively do if you want to participate. First, let's get the timing correct. You can start enrolling in the M3P for the 2025 plan year beginning October 15th, 2024, which of course is the start of the annual election period. However, remember that your enrollment in the program, it won't actually take effect until January 1st of the following year. How do you enroll in the prescription payment plan? Well, Medicare requires that Part D plan sponsors provide several options for you to opt into the M3P. Here is what they must offer. Number one, an election request form sent to you around the same time as you receive your member ID card. Number two, a paper form that you can mail to your plan. Number three, a toll-free telephone number where you can enroll and receive confirmation like a confirmation number. And number four, a website application 
where again, you can sign up and receive a confirmation number that your request has been received. Depending on when you submit your enrollment request, the processing time can and will vary. If you apply before the plan year starts, say during this annual election period in the fall, your request, it must be processed within 10 calendar days or the number of days before your new plan begins, whichever comes first. But if you are already enrolled in a plan and you submit an enrollment request during the plan year, meaning again during 2025, it has to be processed much faster and within just 24 hours. If you think the M3P will benefit you, it is important to enroll before you plan to fill your prescriptions. Otherwise, you might end up at the pharmacy with a high out-of-pocket cost, and then you have to come back later after you apply for the program to receive your medication and spread out the cost through the payment plan. Another point to remember, if you enroll in the M3P, you're doing so with your specific insurance company. If you decide to switch Part D or Medicare Advantage plans, your participation in the M3P with your current plan, it will be terminated. And you will need to opt in again with your new plan if you would like. In this scenario, you'll still be responsible for paying any remaining balance with your previous plan. You still owe me. But don't worry, your previous plan sponsor can't require you to pay it all at once in a lump sum payment, although you do have that option if it works better for you. Let's talk about how the Medicare Prescription Payment Plan, or again, the M3P, actually works if you decide to enroll in it. Let's get down to business. Again, your Part D plan will pay the pharmacy on your behalf for your prescription costs up front. Then you pay that amount back to your Part D insurance company through a monthly payment plan. Now the math behind these monthly payments, it can get complex but we will try our best to break it down. First, let's look at how the maximum monthly payment cap is calculated for the first month you're enrolled in the program, and this equation goes like this. The first monthly maximum cap equals the annual out-of-pocket threshold minus incurred cost to you, the participant, divided by the number of months remaining in the plan year. This means that your monthly payment is determined by taking the annual out-of-pocket threshold, which in 2025 is $2,000, and subtracting any cost you have already paid for covered prescriptions by your plan, then dividing that by the number of months left in the year. Again, we will show this in more detail shortly. Now for each month after that, the payment cap is recalculated based on your remaining costs. Here is how that equation will look. The subsequent month maximum cap equals the sum of the remaining out-of-pocket cost not yet billed to you, the participant, plus additional out-of-pocket costs incurred by the participant. Divide this all by the number of months remaining in the year. This formula, it ensures that your monthly payments, they are adjusted as you incur additional out-of-pocket costs throughout the year when you fill your prescriptions. This is why we said earlier in the video that your costs can and likely will change throughout the year as you fill additional prescriptions. Again, we really cannot emphasize this enough that this program, it spreads out your cost, but it does not reduce the total amount you owe for the year. We will show this and look at some examples to help illustrate how this all comes together in real life. Let's make this a bit more concrete with a simple example first. In this case, meet Mary. Mary, like some of you, she has a couple of very expensive medications and she does not have extra help she'd be looking at a hefty $2,000 out-of-pocket cost in January alone for these prescriptions. But Mary, she made a smart move. Before the year started, she voluntarily enrolled in the M3P with her Part D plan for 2025. This means that when Mary goes to the pharmacy in January, she won't have to pay that $2,000 up front. Instead, Mary walks away with her medications without paying anything at the pharmacy counter. Of course, those costs, they don't just disappear, Here's how it works for her going forward. Her first month's payment cap is calculated using the equation of $2,000 minus zero divided by 12, which is how many months are remaining in the year. This results in a monthly cap of $166.67 per month for the rest of 2025. Mary will then be billed this 166.67 per month by her Part D plan, 
and she continues not to pay at the pharmacy going forward as she fills her prescriptions. This will spread out Mary's large January cost over the year, making it a bit more manageable for her. This is the most straightforward example, and it is important to remember that while Mary's monthly payment in this scenario is about $167 per month, it does not mean that it could not be higher than that in other situations, as we will explore in our next two examples. Let's look at another example with a bit more complexity. This time, meet David. David enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan that includes prescription drug coverage. At the start of 2025, David, he did not see the need to enroll in the M3P since he was only taking low-cost generic medications with a $4 monthly copay. So from January through March, David simply paid $4 each month at the pharmacy. No big deal. But in April, things changed. David's doctor prescribed him Eliquis, a medication with a high retail cost, as some of you might already know. Faced with this new expense, David then decides it was time to enroll in the M3P before picking up his prescription. Thanks to his enrollment, David did not have to pay anything upfront at the pharmacy for his Eliquis or his generic medications. But as we know, those costs are simply spread out over time. To calculate David's first monthly payment, we start with the $2,000 annual out-of-pocket threshold. We then subtract the $12 he's already paid for his generic medications from January to March. Then divide that by the nine months remaining in the year, which gives us a monthly maximum cap of $220.89 for April. This means that David cannot be billed more than $220.89 in April for his medications. Without the payment plan, David would have faced a different scenario. His plan has a $590 deductible for higher tier medications, so he would have had to pay about $617 upfront for a 90-day supply for Eliquis and his generic medications when we take into account his deductible and copay amounts. Now instead of paying $617 all at once, David pays $0 at the pharmacy and then is billed $220.89 by his Medicare Advantage plan for the month of April. Now in this case, he still does owe $396.11 to his insurance company for the remaining balance. And because David has now met his deductible, going forward, his Eliquis would have had a $120 copay for each 90-day supply for the rest of the year, according to his plan's coverage. But remember, that is not what he's going to pay at the pharmacy. In May, David returns to the pharmacy, but this time only for his generic medication, since he already has a 90-day supply of Eliquis. Now, instead of paying the $4 for his generic medication at the pharmacy, he would again pay nothing, and instead, his monthly payment plan amount would be adjusted. In this case, his monthly payment in May would now be calculated as $396.11 plus $4 divided by 8 for the months remaining, which gives you $50.01. In May, David will owe $50.01 to his Medicare Advantage plan, which includes a portion of the leftover cost from April when he did not pay the full $617 upfront. As you can see from this chart, even if David continues his pattern of filling his Eliquis every 90 days and his generic medications monthly, the M3P, it helps smooth out his payments, making it easier for him to manage his costs for the remainder of 2025. For our final example, let's look at how timing plays a crucial role in whether someone benefits from the Medicare prescription payment plan. Meet John and Anne, two people with identical prescriptions and the same Part D plan, but with very different payment plan enrollment timelines. Let's start with Anne. Anne decides that she wants to enroll in the M3P right at the beginning of the year in January. Anne's prescription costs are $500 per month due to her plan's copays and cost structure. Since Anne enrolled in January, we calculate her first month's payment cap as $2,000 minus zero divided by 12, which again is $166.67 per month. This means that although Anne's medication costs are higher than $500 in January, her monthly payment to her Part D plan is capped at $166.67. She pays this amount to her plan instead of the full $500 upfront. 
in February, Anne fills her prescriptions again with another $500 in additional total cost. This time, her monthly payment is recalculated using the updated formula, which is $333.33 plus $500 divided by 11 in this case. This leaves $75.76 for her February payment, which is much lower again than the $500. Anne at this point has paid a total of $242.43 year to date, leaving $757.57 still to be paid to her plan. In March, Anne fills her prescriptions again with another $500 in costs. The new monthly cap calculations look like this. $7.57 plus $500 divided by 10. This leaves $125.76 for Anne's March payment. Up to now, Anne has paid a total of $368.19 year to date out of her pocket. This leaves $1,131.81 remaining. It's a lot of numbers. Do you think? In April, Anne reaches her $2,000 annual prescription spending cap after filling her medications again. From this point forward, using this chart published by Medicare, you can see what Anne's monthly payments would be for each of the months remaining in the year. Now let's consider John. Unlike Anne, John only starts taking his prescription medications in September, and again, his prescriptions have the same $500 out-of-pocket cost. John decides to enroll in the M3P just before his first trip to the pharmacy in September, since he thinks it might help him with his medication costs. Here's the difference. For John's first month of enrollment, the payment calculations look different. This would be $2,000 minus $0, now divided by four because there's only four months remaining. This results in $500. Although John doesn't pay anything upfront at the pharmacy, he's still going to be billed $500 by his Part D plan for the month of September, which coincidentally is exactly what he would have paid without the payment plan. In October, John fills the same prescription again. His payment is recalculated using the equation 0 plus $500 divided by 3, which equals 166.67. This time, John's payment in October is 166.67, which is less than his actual medication cost of $500. However, he still has $333.33 remaining in what he owes after making that payment. If John continues to fill his prescription each month until the end of the year, his monthly payments will fluctuate greatly, and as you can see by this chart, he may even end up paying more out of pocket in December than the $500 he would have paid if he did not enroll in the M3P. This example shows that enrolling in the M3P later in the year like John, it can mean fewer benefits than enrolling early like Ann did. Of course, both Ann and John, they end up paying the same $2,000 over the year, but the timing of this enrollment makes a really big difference in how manageable those payments actually are. And as we've discussed, if you have lower cost medications or your needs change later in the year, the M3P may not always work in your favor. Understanding your own situation and planning ahead is going to be key. Overall, this video, it is meant to provide you with examples to help you better understand how this program will work and how it might be beneficial. This goal is not to turn you into a mathematician or insurance expert, but to give you a more clear picture of what to expect. Here's the bottom line. If you believe that your prescription costs are high enough that you could benefit from the M3P, consider enrolling. Once you're enrolled, let your prescription plan and pharmacy handle the details. They are the ones that are equipped to manage these calculations and ensure that everything is processed correctly. You should not expect to do these calculations on your own, nor should you frankly expect your broker to do these calculations for you. Let's finish by covering an important aspect of the Medicare prescription payment plan, which is disenrollment from the program. There are two ways this can happen, which are either voluntary termination or involuntary termination. First, let's talk about voluntary termination. If you choose to leave the M3P, Medicare requires that all Part D plan sponsors have a process in place to allow you to terminate your participation in the program whenever you'd like. Once you decide to disenroll, your insurance company must work with you to settle any remaining balance. You can choose to pay this balance as a lump sum, 
but it cannot be required of you. After you have opted out, you will receive a formal notice from your plan sponsor confirming the termination of your payment plan. Remember, after your payment plan ends, any future prescriptions that you will fill at the pharmacy will require you to pay the usual out-of-pocket costs according to your plan. For example, if your copay is then $50, you'll pay $50 for your medication at the pharmacy. But here is something important to remember. Opting out of the M3P, it does not cancel your actual prescription drug coverage. Your Part D or Medicare Advantage coverage remains in place as long as you continue to pay your monthly premiums. Let's shift now and talk about involuntary termination. This can happen if you fail to pay your monthly billed amount by the end of the grace period. Part D plan sponsors, they are required to provide at least a two-month grace period for individuals who have not paid their billed amounts by the due date. If you still haven't paid by the end of the grace period, your participation in the payment plan program, it can be terminated, and it likely will be. If this happens to you, your plan must send you a notice of involuntary termination within three calendar days after the grace period ends. Even after termination, your plan will continue to bill you for any monthly amounts you still owe for outstanding balances. But just like with the voluntary termination, they cannot make you pay this back in a lump sum payment. There is also no interest or fees for late payments. And just like with voluntary termination, being removed from the M3P even due to non-payment does not mean your prescription drug coverage is canceled. As long as you keep paying your plan's monthly premium for the actual coverage, your coverage will stay intact. Another thing to keep in mind is that any non-paid funds, they are treated as medical information under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, so they will be handled in accordance with privacy and credit reporting laws. Where's my money? Whether you choose to voluntarily leave the M3P or you're terminated due to non-payment, remember that your prescription drug coverage is still protected. As we discussed in this video, the Medicare prescription payment plan, it is a valuable tool for some helping to spread out high cost at the pharmacy. But as we've also seen today, it is not a fit for everybody. Make sure you carefully assess your own situation and plan accordingly. Now in the meantime, make sure you watch one of these videos next.